Hello friends, welcome to the Cold War Prepper. My name is Lee. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the 15 things that I'm doing to prepare for winter and I'm doing it now and I'm not waiting. Uh, but before we do that, let's start off with Robert Frost and he says half the world is composed of people who have something to say and can't and the other half is, is are people who have nothing to say and say it often. So let's talk about the 15 things that I'm doing uh, to get ready for winter. Remember, we had snowmageddon here February a year and a half ago. It really caught us off guard. Uh, we had ice accumulation. We had uh, it, was, it was dreadful. And uh, we learned all kinds of things. I was, I was able to help out a lot of my neighbors uh, simply because of the fact that I was prepared. And uh, not as prepared as I want to be and not as prepared as I'm going to be this winter. But, you know, I was more prepared than most of them. So let's go through the 15 things that I'm doing. Number one. Check, inspect your outdoor spigot um, covers and uh, locate those. Make sure you have them available so that you can cover your spigots, uh, outdoor spigots, in case you need to immediately. Number two, uh, now is the time to get the ice scrapers for your vehicles and any spray de-icer that you might need. Um, remember, you don't want to turn on your, your windshield wipers to try to get the ice off because that could... Uh, ruin the rubber in your windshield wipers and then they're not good for when you, they're covered with water. <clears throat> so get those things now. Take care of it now uh, before there's a big rush. Number three, service your vehicles. Make sure you got air pressure. Take a look at your batteries. Take a look at your uh, filters and uh, make sure you have the proper amount of antifreeze in your radiator. Number four, if you have a gas generator, a 5kW generator, 3kW generator, 1.5kW generator. Do we have a Honda 5kW? So uh, check the uh, air filter, the oil filter, make sure you do an oil change, check the spark plug, uh, make sure you have good gas available. We, and that's going to be another one, uh, number five, which is make sure you have, uh, I have four or five gallon cans of gas with stable in them. And so we use one of those each month and then replace it and then we kind of rotate them around. Uh, so we rotate our gas almost like we do our food. <clears throat> but uh, make sure you have all that available for your generator or for your vehicle, whichever one you need. Number six, stock up now on instant coffee, instant soups, uh, instant meals, instant food. Uh, that all you need to do is add hot water and, uh, you know, tea, cocoa, coffee. Uh, I have recently discovered Nutrient Survival. I really love their coffee. Up until recently, I was a Mount Hagen guy, one of, one of my fellow warrant officers at uh, Fort Huachuca, the MI officers. Uh, he, he was an instructor at the MI uh, <clears throat> school as well. And he's, he's a lightweight backpacker. He turned me on to Mount Hagen coffee. And I thought it was the best until I discovered Nutrient Survival. So now I'm trying to stock up on Nutrient Survival. I'm going to have it. Uh, I, I Swiss Miss. Got to have at least three or four <laughs> number 10 cans of that. Uh, I'll show you a picture of my coffee stash. You, you know, this will be one third of my coffee stash. I'll take a picture of it and show it to you. Um, that's how dependent I am on coffee and, and uh, hot chocolate. Number seven, charge your home storage batteries and discharge them. I have a Jackery and it recommends the fact that the owner's manual says they recommend that you discharge it and recharge it about every six months just to prolong the battery life. Uh, so that along with if you have any smaller ones like we have smaller ones just for our cell phones I have a backpack version on my uh, uh, bug out bag and uh, you know so get all those charged up make sure you have any extra batteries uh, as far as uh, anything that you can charge up solar or through a, a plug in the wall uh, I'm a lot of my fact a lot of my flashlights are uh, USB charged so we're charging all of those make sure that they have a full charge also, check and make sure you have ample batteries for anything that's battery run. <clears throat> make sure you have ample AA and AAA batteries or whatever other batteries you might need for specific things. Um, number uh, nine is inspect and service your solar systems. And I, I kind of talked about that with the Jackery. And um, same thing with the solar system up top. Uh, the nice thing is it, when you have a solar system installed for the home along with the battery backup, uh, there is a, a, a program that they give you on your computer where you can monitor the output of each one of the solar panels and that does a good job for you so you can see how they're performing make sure you're doing services necessary for that. Um, number nine, I, I love these things. They're called UCO Candeliers and UCO and I'll have a link down below. Uh, it's a three candle candelabra and it has a solid top so you can use that basically to warm a pot of water uh, for your Swiss Miss uh, hot chocolate or, or for your uh, 
nutrient survival instant coffee or, or for your uh, tea or soup or anything else so uh, but it also can be a small space heater each candle is good for nine hours you got three of them there I would also recommend you get a couple extra boxes of candles because uh, you don't know how long the emergency is going to last they also have single ban uh, burner candles I have two of those uh, so we've got two triples and two two singles um, then there's a scout stove and this is uh, you take a can of tuna this is I call it scout stove a lot of other places have different names for it hobo stove and everything else but uh, back in the 60s this is how we cooked when we, in boy scouts was we took a uh, tuna can used a safety opener so side opening uh, opener so the, the lid can fit back onto it uh, and we'd wash it of course and then we'd cut some cardboard so let's say if the tuna can is this tall cardboard fits in it like this you want the corrugation up so that you can see the the, the pores uh, when you look at it from the top melt some paraffin pour that paraffin into the can now the the um, cardboard becomes your um, wick and your fuel becomes the paraffin so it makes a fantastic little stove put it inside it fits perfectly inside a sterno stove uh the, you know the portable sterno stove so uh you can use it in that make sure you put that on something safe like the door to your oven uh, but it's also a small a great small space heater uh, speaking of space heaters um, we also have a butane stove we have two of them actually uh, bought one from sam's and and a plenty of butane uh, bottles to, to, for it to cook this is the one you see at, ho at hotels when they have somebody out there hand, you know cooking your uh, eggs to order they have a small one burner stove with butane bottle inside of it uh, the second one i got when i ordered my can cooker and uh, so a can cooker is basically uh, an outdoor pressure cooker and so this they gave us a butane stove with it as well so we have two butane stoves which is good then we can have soup and coffee at the same time um, then I checked um, I'm, I've got to get some more propane for the mr. buddy and so make sure I, I got to make sure I and I want to run that up and make sure that it's working and, and I don't have to do any maintenance on it so I want to inspect all of my portable gas heaters uh, propane heaters whatever whatever I have and make sure that all of them are operational and ready to go for the winter um, then uh, make sure you have a carbon di carbon monoxide detector I would say get two of them and and because carbon monoxide and air are pretty much I mean there, there's like a 0.8 difference in the in the uh, uh, specific gravity of, of, of the two of them and but they're so close that it's pitiful so you know just carbon monoxide could be low it could be high it just depends on where it's coming from I would recommend getting two install one about chest level one about knee level and that way you're safe um, along with that make sure you anytime you're using any kind of an open flame uh, even here in our house we have gas stove so I have a um, fire extinguisher right next to the stove all the time we, as a matter of fact we have a fire extinguisher in every room I have one right next to my bed on my nightstand there's a video about that uh, that I did well oh, maybe six months ago uh, if you have a, a fire pit in the backyard or a brazier or anything like that make sure you have plenty of charcoal and, and or firewood one thing you might consider doing is if you do have a fire pit in the backyard get some stones some large stones or some bricks and put them in that fire pit during the daytime and warm those up and then at nighttime what you can do is put them into a metal bucket and put those on the door of your oven and that's another uh, form of heat where you can dissipate a little bit of heat in your in your home most important of all uh, make sure that you have the proper clothing so uh, you know a lot of people weren't prepared for you know negative uh, temperatures here in Texas and so a lot of people didn't have the good coats or anything else good galoshes uh, you don't want to be outside in Skechers you know uh, uh, trapsing through the snow and ice uh, so get, get a good pair of galoshes um, then a good coat heavy uh, you might want to consider dressing in layers that's actually the best way to keep warm um, and make sure your coat is waterproof and windproof and it has a hood I wear a Navy watchman's cap and it's made out of wool and uh, so that keeps my head warm and then I pull the hood to my windproof rainproof uh, jacket that I got from the power company when I worked for the power company this is the same one that the uh, uh, linemen wear when they're fixing your your uh, lines and and general and uh, transformers during a power during a power failure 
<clears throat> and then a good pair of gloves, really good pair of gloves. Uh, and you want those to be waterproof and windproof as well. I like mine because they're lined on the inside with rabbit fur. Okay, so that's the 15 things that I'm doing. I hope it gives you an idea or two on what you might consider doing as well. We'll close with another quote from Robert Frost. And he says, uh, the world is full of uh, willing people. Uh, some are willing to work and the others are willing to let them do the work. So remember, we're all in this together so we can come out the other side together. Togetherness is the key. Be kind, nice, and respectful to each other. Stay safe. Bye-bye.